Welcome to the ACE Project, brought to you by the Literacy.io team at Texas A&M University. I'm your host, Ashley Stack, also known as Captain Comprehension. We are so excited you'll be joining us on this reading journey and hope you and your child enjoy this time together. So get comfy, rev up your brains, and get ready to think, because we are ready to help you become a comprehension detective. Hi, super readers. My name is Captain Comprehension, and I am here to guide you as you become a comprehension detective. Welcome to week 19 of our podcast. This week, we're reading Abe's Honest Words. Abraham Lincoln is considered one of the most important U.S. presidents. Today's biography shows how Abe used his honest words, spoken from his heart, to solve a horrible problem in the United States. Before we begin reading, let's go over some important vocabulary that will help us better understand the passage. Our first word is proclamation. A proclamation is a big public announcement. A synonym or word that means the same is declaration or edict and an antonym or opposite might be secret. Our second term is liberty. Liberty means freedom from control. A synonym or word that means the same could be independence or emancipation. An antonym or opposite might be subjection or slavery. Then we have the word emancipation. Emancipation is freedom from slavery. A synonym or word that means the same would be liberation and an antonym or opposite would be enslavement. Then we'll hear the word oppose. Oppose means against or in disagreement with. A synonym or word that means the same could be fought against and an antonym or opposite would be promote. Finally, we have the word convince. Convince means to persuade others to believe something. A synonym or word that means the same would be persuade and an antonym or opposite would be dissuade. Okay, super readers, pause your videos and text POD19, that's POD19, to 866-903-2545. That will get your texting survey started for the week. Which word is a synonym for liberty? A. Imprisonment B. Confinement C. Slavery D. Freedom which word helps the reader understand the meaning of the word emancipation? A. Slavery B. Issued C. Freed D. Called It's time for us to read the story. Abe's Honest Words If slavery is not wrong, nothing is wrong. I cannot remember when I did not so think and feel so. Abraham Lincoln in the slave state of Kentucky, deep in the wilderness, young Abraham learned to hunt for nuts and currants, and fish for trout and bass, and tend to soil and seed. He learned sorrow at age nine, when his mama died, but he found great joy with a loving stepmother, who encouraged him to read and learn. Abraham Lincoln is my name, and with my pen I wrote the same. I wrote in both haste and speed, and left it here for fools to read. The family moved deeper into the wilderness to the free state of Indiana. Panther screams and prowling bears filled Abraham's nights with fear. He had just a mite of schooling, yet he loved words the way his papa, a master storyteller, did. He stuffed books inside his shirt. In between splitting wood and plowing, he stood in the field and read. He read some books so many times he knew whole parts by heart. The things I want to know are in books. My best friend is the man who'll get me a book I ain't yet read. Another move to New Salem, a village in Illinois. The long, lanky boy was now a man. He ferried people and goods down the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. In between the pull of the pole and the splash of the water, he listened to hunters spin tall tales of a mighty marksman, half man, half alligator. And sailors described giant mosquitoes that could kill a man. He heard lawyers tell how they used words to gain justice for ordinary folks. He heard preachers quote from the Bible, A house divided against itself cannot stand. He stored these different voices in his heart and wove them into his own words. The long, muddy Mississippi River brought Lincoln south to New Orleans. He walked on cobblestone paths and along canals, 
past flowers spilling over lacy iron balconies. He saw men and women in fancy clothes, eating fancy foods and sipping wine. French, Spanish, and English words filled his ears, but a hideous sight shattered his joy. Twelve black persons, chained six and six together, strung together like so many fish upon a trot line, being separated forever from their childhood, their friends, their fathers and mothers, and brothers and sisters, from their wives and children, into perpetual slavery. Lincoln worked at many jobs, farmhand, store owner, postmaster, surveyor, rail splitter, wherever, whatever, he always had a book in hand, elocution, grammar, mathematics, biography, history, poetry, plays. Upon the subject of education, I view it as the most important subject which we as a people can be engaged in. America was growing. Farmers needed new waterways and railroads to ship their crops. Everyone needed better education. If he became a lawmaker, he could help people get these things, so he ran for the Illinois State Legislature. He spoke in public squares and country stores and hayfields. I am young and unknown to many of you. I was born and have ever remained in the most humble walks of life. I have no wealthy or popular relations to recommend me. He lost the election, but people liked what he said and how he said it. He ran again. This time he won. He ran three more times and won. He became a lawyer. His clients praised honest old Abe, the lawyer who was never known to lie. He didn't like the nickname Abe, but it stuck. Resolve to be honest at all events, and if you cannot be an honest lawyer, resolve to be honest without being a lawyer. Choose some other occupation. Nearly four million black men, women, and children were enslaved in southern states. Lincoln thought slavery a great evil. If he became a United States Senator, more people would hear him speak out against it. In speech after speech, he reminded people that slavery did not fit with the ideals of the Declaration of Independence. As a nation, we began to declare that all men were created equal. We now practically read it, all men are created equal except black persons. He lost the election, but again his words got much attention. People felt he spoke from his heart. In the next two years, tension over slavery grew between the South and North. Lincoln ran for president and spoke out against this evil practice. He won this election. But a month before he took office, seven southern states left the Union. They formed their own government with their own president. In his first inaugural address, Lincoln reminded Americans that they were one people. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. On April 12, 1861, Southern troops attacked Fort Sumter, a federal fort in South Carolina. Lincoln knew he had no choice now. The North had to fight the South to bring it back into the Union. I hold that the Union of these states is perpetual. No state can lawfully get out of the Union. Families were torn apart as husbands, fathers, and sons went off to war, many never to return. Many Northerners worried that Lincoln did not have the skills to lead the nation in this terrible time. He's too backwards. He's unpresidential. He tells too many silly jokes. He's had too little experience in government. If I were to try to read, much less answer, all the attacks made on me, this shop might as well be closed for any other business. I do the very best I know how, the very best I can, and I mean to keep doing so until the end. Lincoln believed that true liberty could not permit slavery. He decided to use his wartime powers as commander-in-chief to end slavery. In the third year of the war, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation. It freed over three million black men, women, and children, and called for black men to join the Union Army. In giving freedom to the slave, we assure freedom to the free. Most white northerners opposed Lincoln's proclamation, but he stood firm. I never in my life felt more certain that I was doing right than I do in signing this paper. My whole soul is in it. The war dragged on. Lincoln grew sadder and sadder as more Americans died. He went to the Gettysburg battlefield and again reminded the nation why these men had sacrificed their lives. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. 
The Emancipation Proclamation had freed slaves only in the states and territories that were in rebellion. Lincoln wanted slavery ended in the entire nation. Most white lawmakers did not want this. He called them to the White House to convince them of what he knew was right. The moment came when I felt that slavery must die, that the nation might live. Finally, they agreed. In the fourth year of the war, victory seemed close for the North, but Lincoln felt no joy. Hundreds of thousands of men on both sides had died in battle. The country was deeply divided. Many Northerners wanted to punish the South for starting the war. Southerners were furious that the Union Army had destroyed their cities and homes and crops. Could the nation ever be one people again? In his second inaugural address, Lincoln shared his vision of how the country could heal itself. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds. The South finally surrendered. The job of healing the nation began, but Lincoln was not there to help. An assassin's bullet ended his life. But his words were there to guide those who chose to remember. It is for us the living, rather, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. I hope you enjoyed that book, Super Readers. What is the text structure of Abe's Honest Words? Was there a problem? Was it solved? Were two or more things compared? Here are some of the things I heard in the story. Evil. Hideous. Slavery. Did not fit. Against. Opposed. Freed. Use your text structure bookmark to help you figure out the text structure for Abe's Honest Words. What is the text structure of the passage? A. Comparison. B. Cause and effect. C. Problem and solution. D. Cause problem and solution. Welcome back. It's time for us to use our text structure to write our main idea sentences. The text structure of this passage is cause, problem, and solution. So we'll use the sentence stems, the cause is, the problem is, the solution is. Pause your video and text in your main idea sentences to the survey now. Hey there, super readers. Here's what I wrote for my main idea sentences. The cause was slavery. The problem was Lincoln thought it was evil and wanted to convince others of that too. The solution was Lincoln used his honest words to convince others slavery was bad and put an end to it. How does yours compare? Okay, super readers, it's time for us to answer a multiple choice main idea question. Remember, when we look at these questions, we have to ask ourselves which one contains the cause, the problem, and the solution. What is the best main idea of this election? A. Abraham Lincoln saw how evil slavery was and wanted to end it. He used his words and position as president to argue against slavery and end it with the Emancipation Proclamation. B. Abraham Lincoln loved to read and learn. He thought education was important, and he stored others' voices and words in his heart. He was very honest and earned the nickname Honest Abe. C. Abraham Lincoln was elected president. When the South attacked Fort Sumter, he knew that he would have to go to war in order to keep the United States together. The North won the war. D. Abraham Lincoln did not agree with slavery. He saw many people tied together when he visited New Orleans and wished he could do something to stop it. Pause your video and text in your answer now. Great work, detectives. Now let's extend our main idea to write a summary of the passage. First, we'll think back to our main idea. The cause was slavery. The problem was Lincoln thought it was evil and wanted to convince others of that too. The solution was Lincoln used his honest words to convince others slavery was bad and put an end to it. Pause your video and talk with your adult partner about what some details are that you could add to the cause, some details to the problem, and some details to the solution. When you're ready, press play to look at what I wrote. Here's my summary. 
How does it compare to yours? The cause was slavery in the United States, which the North and South did not agree on. The problem was that Lincoln thought it was evil and wanted to convince others of that too. He did not feel it fit with the Declaration of Independence, so he became a lawyer and later ran for office to help people get what they needed. The solution was Lincoln used his honest words to convince others slavery was bad and put an end to it. Lincoln used his position as president to issue the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed slaves. How did your summary compare? It's time for us to answer a multiple choice summary question. Remember, you're looking for the answer that contains the cause, the problem, and the solution, plus a few details from the passage. What is the best summary of the selection? A. Abraham Lincoln was one of the presidents of the United States. Before he was president, he was a lawyer. As president, Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation. B. Abraham Lincoln wanted to end the evil of slavery in the United States. He became a lawyer and eventually ran for president, led the fight against the South, and used his honest words to write the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing slaves. C. Abraham Lincoln grew up in Kentucky. Even though he only had a little schooling, he enjoyed reading and learning, and would stuff books inside his shirt. He liked to listen to stories and listened closely to the words of lawyers and preachers. D. Abraham Lincoln was shot and killed right after the South surrendered. He never got to help the nation heal after the war because of this. Pause your video and text in your answer now. You're doing great work, detectives. It's time for us to infer. Remember, when we infer, we use the information we read and some information we already have in our brains to draw conclusions. Why might people have been willing to listen to Abraham Lincoln? Why does the author include the information about Lincoln becoming a lawmaker? Pause your video and discuss these questions with your adult partner. When you're ready, press play to look at the multiple choice questions. Why might people have been willing to listen to Abraham Lincoln? A. They thought he was funny. B. He spoke honestly and from the heart. C. His speeches were very well written. D. They agreed with everything he had to say. Why does the author include the information about Lincoln becoming a lawmaker? A. To inspire others to become lawyers. B. To describe the process of becoming a lawyer. C. To explain how Lincoln came to be president. D. To tell a story about his job as a lawyer. Pause your videos and send in the last answer now. Thank you so much for joining us this week, Comprehension Detectives. I hope you learned something new about President Abraham Lincoln. I look forward to joining you again next week. Remember, we can all be super readers. This is Captain Comprehension, signing off.